So in this video what we're going to be doing and amazingly this is the second before last video now so there's only going to be one more after this really looking at IES VE's Vista but in this one what we're going to be looking at is modeling natural ventilation within IES. Now this video will not be all inclusive of all modes of natural ventilation we're just going to touch on the basics here and that's all this series really is so before we really get into it what I want to do is just quickly point out a couple of youtubers that have or a couple of YouTube videos that actually go into this in more depth and describe the process of doing natural ventilation which is a skill in its own right and people can specialize within it inside of their software so there's a YouTube channel called Green Castle Energy that goes into a lot of detail in how you model natural ventilation in buildings using IESVE. And if you want to learn more about this, I'd highly, highly recommend going and having a look at that. This is not exactly my speciality, but I'll still try and walk you through the software anyway. So, as before, we still have got our model. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to go down to macro flow and so we're going to be modeling our buildings natural ventilation if you remember this building has some high and low windows and what I'm just going to do is I'm going to turn my cursor back on there we go so inside of Macroflow, first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be coming up to the top here and clicking on our Macroflow opening types. And we can see that there's an initially just one. Now depending on the type of project you're doing, you may or may not go to the trouble of modeling opening types within IES. If you do have a natural ventilating building though, this could be an extremely powerful way of simulating how your building is going to perform and it can feed into your analysis of thermal comfort and whether or not your building is actually going to be able to perform as expected. Now we can see here we only have one opening type so I'm just going to close that for a moment and see what we have. If we go to exonometric view we can see that if we select our building edit selection of set opening types and this will be very familiar from when we were dealing with constructions we can see that they're all set to this type and we also have a door same thing so what we're initially going to do is we're probably going to want to have at least one more and we're going to call this opening window this way our default position, our default window that's applied currently to all the windows in the project will be closed and this one, new one that we're going to apply to some of the windows is going to be opening. So let's go through this. So initially we have exposure type. Now the exposure type is going to affect how the pressure is going to be affecting or the wind pressure is going to be affecting our building. Initially this is set to a semi-exposed wall. If we're going to detailed analysis we should be changing this to properly reflect what's occurring. So within these scenarios actually a semi-exposed wall is reasonably fine. But you can see as if we're going up the building and I recently learned from that video that I just told you about nonetheless that this is a ratio of the height of the building to the height of the window itself so we can see here we have lots and lots and lots of different options try and choose the one that best suits your project we can also see here that it will give us the coefficients of these kind of things excellent on the next one we have the opening category now initially this is just set to an operable area so if I said this is a hundred then we can see that the equivalent orifice area is 100. The equivalent orifice area is effectively how much area the window actually has opening. So if we change this to a top hung, or let's go with a side window, side door hung. 
So we might have one of these windows here as opening 50% with a max angle opening of 90. So we can see here that it's generates an equivalent opening area. If we had a top home window or center home, go top home, uh, center. And we said that the operable openable area is 50%, max angle opening is 20, so maybe there's a restraint bar, then the equivalent orifice area is 16.129. We also have options here for just saying how that center hung is working. <coughs> so that's what this does. I'm just going to hit save. And the next part, crack flow coefficient, I must say truthfully, I haven't really touched this very often, but I found out, again off that video that I just mentioned, that if we have a look on MacroFlow's calculation, we can actually come up with uh, values for this. So this is effectively a factor for working out how much air is going to leak through our window even when it's when it's closed. It's the construction quality of the window effectively. And this will be a product of how old it is, construction style, seals, and within the MacroFlow uh, calculation methodology, we can see that we have some different values for this. So this is an old building, non-weather stripped, hinged. We might have uh, a, a median here of 0 0.74. So let's just enter that value, 0 0.74. Crack length as a percentage of the opening, we could just say 100% for the moment. And, and that accounts then for the fact this is an older building, it might not be properly sealed all the way around. Right, so now we go on to opening threshold. This is the temperature at which the window control is considered to be open, which is going to take a little bit to get around. So we're saying at the moment, at zero degrees, this window is open. However, there is a control logic here as well. So zero degrees, this is open, but it's off continuously. So this window will never open. If we changed it on continuously, the moment the temperature was above zero degrees, it will be open. And we could do various things here, like we could say, okay, during the system occupied hours, remember we had that annual, that office system extended hours, we could say that, okay, if the temperature is above zero, between 7 and 6.30 in the evening, then the window will be open. Now clearly this is not great. We could set this to say 18 degrees and have it just come on in the summer, but there's going to be times when this is not a good idea. So what we're about to do is we're about to go and do some logic we need something better because what can happen in this scenario is if you imagine you've got a classroom or an office on a very hot day in the summer and you're trying to see whether your natural ventilation is going to be working appropriately to keep the occupants of that room in a suitable temperature the last thing that we want to do is have those windows open when it's over 28 degrees outside. That will actually just be letting heat in and it won't give a fair approximation of the, how the boom is going to perform. Now the way that we do this is that we come down to here to the profiles tab and we're going to create a new profile, a modulating profile, and we're going to call this opening algorithm and in this video I'm just going to show a summer opening algorithm I'll demonstrate where you can get the information for a profile for winter and the shoulder seasons but I'm just going to do the summer one and what we're going to do is we're going to have this working throughout the day with a control logic this does assume that people are going to be here all day. 
as before, if we are modeling people not being here, we can just add a couple of times in where this is still set to zero. So that we're going to say that. And actually, let's just do that to demonstrate it. So let's say between 12 o'clock in the evening and 7 o'clock in the morning, this window is going to remain closed. So then after 7 o'clock, our control logic is going to kick in. And then let's say till 8 o'clock in the evening, our control logic will remain in operation. So we'll be all editing these two here to give, our, give ourselves an approximation for how the building is going to perform. Is that how a house performs in reality? No, but we are just trying to demonstrate an example here. Okay, so let's make sure this is ticked for ventilation. And if remember the golden rule, if we don't find it, then we'll just tick everything. So and now we're going to go down to the formula tab and we can start inserting a control logic. So the first thing is if the room temperature is greater than well, we would like to, if the because this is the summertime, if our wind, if our room temperature is greater than the outdoor temperature, then we're going to say that this window is open. That makes good sense. And just for reference, there's a really fantastic guide on modeling these kind of opening things that I tend to use. And it's made by a company called Window Master. You can get this on Google by just typing in modeling natural ventilation in IESVE. And they actually give you these formulas and tell you how to do them which is just brilliant. And they use an even more advanced formula that actually has the window ramping up and ramping down as well. But we're gonna do a, a simpler version of this. We also want, so or, we're probably gonna want the windows to open. If the room carbon dioxide is greater than Let's put a numerical value in here. See if it goes above a thousand, then that window will also be open. Or if our room air temperature is greater than let's say if our room air temperature is greater than 24 degrees or 20 and our outdoor air temperature is less than numerical value 28. So now we're saying if the outdoor temperature is hotter than, no, oh, if the indoor temperature is hotter than the outdoor, be open. Or if the room dioxide level, so that stuffiness is getting up above a thousand, open the window. Or if the room temperature is greater than 20, open the window. And or if the outside temperature is less than 28, open the window. So now we create the formula. And we can see that this is built up, the formula here. And importantly, we've got the, or, the AND statement collecting these two statements together. So these two bottom ones are paired. Now if we go OK, I'm just going to, we can also type the formula for reference. So with that guy that I mentioned here, we could literally just copy and paste that in, which we may do in a moment. OK. And I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go to the formula for this one, type formula. Oops, cancel. I think I need to load this up here. Type formula, copy, okay. That's it here. Type formula, there we go. Okay. And now our control logic is in. Okay. So now that we got our profile, let's just hit okay. 
hit save. Closing this window. And oh, it hasn't appeared. Well, that's no problem because we know exactly what to do now. So we're just going to go back. And this may require us to create a, a yearly profile. So let's just go to that trouble now. And again, all we're doing is quickly adding these in for a little bit of demo data. Window opening. Hit save. Save. I couldn't get it to appear, so I just closed Macroflow once again, and now it appears to be there. Hit save with this open now. I'm going to set this to zero degrees because now we want the window to effectively be open anytime our control logic says to be so. Hit save, okay. And we're going to just apply this now to a few of the windows. So I'm just going to apply it to, let's see, let's apply it to the kitchen and the front rooms. These two rooms here, and then we'll leave those as are, as is, just so we can see the difference. So where these are now external windows, we're just going to change those over to opening windows, hit save, and then we're going to run this through Apache. Now would be a good time to have a quick chat about how to run this. So. We've done this before, but we just need to include the macro flow link. And let's just make sure that we're keeping up with our convention. Of having well written results files. Cross our fingers that this, this runs because it's now a model that's been worked on for well over 12 months so there might be some glitches in here that I've not done in a while okay that's all sorted let's view the results and what I'm gonna immediately jump to is gonna make sure that that macro flow is selected and one of the ways that we can test whether our control logic is working is we can go to Macroflow Arrows. And we can check to see. So we're going to go immediately to a summer months because that's when the temperatures are going to be hot enough. And then we can run through the day what we should see is that these windows are shut before 7 because that's what we set in our control logic and after 7 providing the, temp the conditions are right we should have these windows opening which we can see that they are now let's just check within these rooms so let's go to the kitchen and we can have a look at the air temperature profile here we go look at that so we've got at 7 o'clock in the morning or 6.30 when our control logic runs in we've got the air temperature jumping up because we get occupancy within the room that's what we set it to at 8 o'clock or 7.30 I think it is we have the windows opening and diet and this is causing the temperature to plummet down I would guess that the outdoor conditions at this point and don't worry about following this at the moment with Vista Pro the next video is actually going to talk about this in more depth and that will be the final video in this series. If we have a look, just cross reference that with the dry bulb temperature. From the outside we can see that, yeah, okay, so the dry bulb temperature at this point is much lower. So that control logic is saying open the windows. At this point, 
the window is still going to be open because it's not above 28 degrees. Let's see if we can pick a hotter day. So if we go to, if we pick the peak variable day, dry bulb temperature, and we want peak variable. Range tests, peak timetable, 22nd of July. Oh, hang on up. Need to type the entire year, my bad. Peak timetable is the 8th of June. And it's 26 degrees, okay. And actually, truthfully, we could play about with this all day. I don't think we're going to here. I think it's sufficient at the moment to say that we've proven this control logic works for this instance. I would highly recommend though, if you are going to be modeling natural ventilation within your building, just you do need to include, as this guide suggests here, a summer day, summer night, winter, fall and spring, and be mindful of how people are actually going to be using your building in reality. People don't always follow control logics. And we as engineers should be well aware of that. People will, particularly in British context, will, will quite happily leave windows open when it's really, really hot outside. So just be mindful of those things. Thank you very much for watching. And in the next video, as I said, we're going to be covering Vista Pro. And that will be it. That will be us done. Thank you all very much.